offices will talk about it. In our offices will talk about it. Total deliverance for everyone. Total liberation for everyone. Manifest your power in every life tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Before you sit down, we finally, amen. God bless you tonight. I welcome you to this special night. It's a night of wonders. The wonders of his healing power. In Matthew chapter 15, reading from verse 30. Matthew chapter 15, verse 30. And great multitudes came to him, having with them those that were lame, blind, dumb, maimed, and many others. And he cast out, he cast them down at Jesus' feet, and he healed them. And he healed them. How many of them? He healed them. Is coming to you tonight. The statue one is so much that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak, the maimed to behold, the lame to walk, the blind to see, and they glorified the God of Israel. Tonight we're talking about the healing ministry of Christ. In the past, at the present time, and until he comes again, Christ's healing power is unsurpassed, as well as unending. It's incomparable to any other ministry you would have read about in the Old Testament. Moses, Elijah, Elisha, at great supernatural miracle working ministries, yet Christ's manifestations surprised and surpassed them all. As Christ came to Israel, that is to the nation of Israel, in less than four years, about three and a half years, in his earthly ministry, he made miracles and signs and wonders come on and daily things to behold. The blind saw, the deaf heard, the dumb spoke, and even people that were having terrible problems, they were killed. Evil spirits over Satan and all his attacks, over all forms of human suffering. In fact, the people wondered because they had never read anything like that before, seen anything like that before. In Mark chapter 7, reading from verse 37. Mark chapter 7, verse 37. And they were beyond measure astonished. They were surprised. They were amazed, saying, He has done all things well. We're talking about Jesus. He has not changed. His power has not changed. His authority has not changed. As they said at that time, he has done all things well. You are going to say the same thing today. Yeah. When you see the manifestation of his power in your life, you will remember he's still doing all things well. He will do it in your life. Luke chapter 9. Reading from verse 42, Luke chapter 9, reading from verse 42. And as he was yet a coming, the devil threw him down, a demon possessed person, and tear him. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child and delivered him again to his father. Verse 43, and they were all amazed at the mighty power of God. But while they wondered, everyone, at all things which Jesus did, he said unto his disciples, let these sayings sink down into your ears. As you hear tonight, passages we're going to read, as you hear tonight, 
promises we're going to look at as we read tonight, all the six manifestations of the power of the Lord tonight, it says, let all these sink down deep into your ears because Jesus works miracles. And tonight, he's going to perform his wonders in your life. Look at the summary of the ministry of Christ in Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, reading from verse 22. Acts of the Apostles chapter 2, verse 22. Ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you. Look at this. By miracles and wonders and signs. A man approved of God. By miracles, wonders, and signs. A man that the Almighty God himself testified. And the works he did testified. And the manifestations of the Spirit of God testified in his life. Because of the wonders and the signs and the miracles which God did by him. In the midst of you as ye yourselves also know. And that power is still the same today. The name is still mighty today. And his manifestations through that name is still present today. Look at what he did in the past and look at what he's doing today. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth or the Holy Ghost our power. The Holy Ghost was upon him. The Holy Ghost was mighty within him. And the Holy Ghost ministered through him. And then it says, and where is power? Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is power. Where the Holy Ghost is manifested, there is power. And then he said, who went about? As he taught the lives of the people in towns, in cities, in villages, in synagogues, in temples, he went about and anywhere he saw the works of the devil, he dealt with it. And it's still the same today. And he's still going about. He'll be getting to you there tonight. And anywhere he finds the works of the devil, he destroys it tonight in Jesus' name. Who went about doing good, healing how many people here? I said, how many people here? Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And what he did made the people surprised, amazed, and they wondered. That's why we're talking about the wonders of his healing power. The wonders of Christ's healing power and look at the way it affected them at that time when they saw his healings they saw his miracles they saw his power they saw the demonstration of the mighty move of the holy ghost in his life look at the effect on them mark chapter 2 verse 12 mark chapter 2 verse 12 and immediately he arose and took up his bed and went forth before them all. In so much that they were, how many of them? All amazed, all surprised. They were all amazed and they glorified God saying, We never saw it on this fashion. They never read anything like that before. They never saw anything like that before. The manifestation of the power of the Lord Jesus Christ in the fullness of the Spirit. They said, we never saw it on this fashion. Tonight you will do something in your life. That even though you've heard of miracles before, you've experienced miracles before, tonight you will say, this is new. I said, you will say, this is new. <laughs> and you'll say, I never saw it like this before. He must do something in your life tonight. <laughs> something new. Something surprising. Something amazing. 
that he will do in your life tonight. Mark chapter 7, verse 37. Mark chapter 7, verse 37. And were beyond measure astonished, saying, He has done all things well. Every area of your life you will touch. Your spirit, your soul, your body, your family, your business, every area he will touch tonight and you'll be able to say he has done all things well. Luke chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 36, Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 36, and they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded unclean spirits, and they come out. They have to come out. In the name of Jesus tonight, they have to come out. Every evil spirit, every demonic spirit, all principalities and powers, Every kind of spirit of power that oppresses anyone to here tonight, in the name of Jesus, it has to come out. Yeah. What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded, not suggesting, not pleading, authority. Somebody there shout authority. He commanded the unclean spirits, and they come out. John chapter 20. We're reading from verse 30. John chapter 20. Reading from verse 30. Here it tells us in verse 30. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that she might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. It says, all you read in Matthew and Mark and Luke and John, that Jesus did many, many more miracles than, than those ones who have read, read. But it says, these are written to whet your appetite. These are reaching to alert you, to intimate you. That look, if he can do this, then you believe every problem in your life is rolled away in Jesus' name. John chapter 21 verse 25. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, that which if they should be reaching everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. And everybody shout, yeah. Amen. The Lord is going to do wonders. He's going to heal the sick. He's going to save the soul. He's going to deliver the oppressed. He'll do so much that if they were to be reaching, there will not be no books to contain them. Now, Jesus Christ did all that. And then before he left, he said something in John chapter 14. Reading from verse 12. John chapter 14. Reading from verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Anyone there? He that believeth on me, you see here tonight, he that believeth on me, is a sister there tonight? He that believeth on me, the works that I do, he shall do also. And greater works, somebody shout greater works, greater miracles, greater healing. Let me hear your voice, greater healing. Greater deliverance, greater manifestation, greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever 
ye shall ask in my name. Tonight is the night of fulfillment. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. This verse must come true in your life tonight. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, say it for yourself. If you, who is that? I said, who is that? Where is he? Where is she? If you will ask anything tonight in his name, he will do it for you. Tonight, I'm talking to you on the wonders of Christ's healing power. The wonders of Christ's healing power. Three things we're talking about. Number one, the comprehensive word of his holy promise. The comprehensive word of his holy promise. Number two, the constant work of the heavenly prince. The constant work of the heavenly prince. Point number three, the confirmed wonders of his healing power. The confirmed wonders of his healing power. Number one, tell me. The comprehensive word of his holy promise. Have you ever had something like that before? Holy promise? That the promise is holy. We're looking at Psalm 105. Psalm 105. I'm reading from verse 42. In Psalm 105, reading from verse 42, it tells us the qualifying word of the promise of God. It says in Psalm 105, verse 42, For he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. He remembered his holy promise. What kind of promise is that? That he remembered. And what was the effect of that remembrance of that promise? Look at verse 37. He brought them forth also was silver and gold. And there was not one feeble person among the tribes. How did that happen? Because of the promise? Because of the holy promise that he remembered. The promise he had made unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob. And the promise he fulfilled on that glorious day when they came out of the land of captivity. He remembered his holy promise. And because of that, he brought them out. Because of that, he healed them. Because of that, he delivered them. Because of that, he set them free. The promise of God is holy and heavenly. It came from heaven and nothing on earth can change that promise. The promise of God is comprehensive and complete. There is nothing in your life that is left out of that promise. Comprehensive and totally complete. The promise of God is extensive and ever true. It sustains to your soul, to your spirit, to your body, to your life, to your family, to your business. The promise of God is very extensive and is ever true. The promise of God is incomparable, incomparable to any other solution you can find in any other place. Look at the promise of God and look at your problem. There is a promise in the word of God that matches that problem. And tonight, when that promise of God comes against your problem, there'll be an explosion. 
the bulldozer which is the power of God will come on that uh, problem like a dynamite and blow everything away tonight in Jesus name from the top of your head to the tip of your toe power authority anointing it breaks through coming upon your life tonight in Jesus name the promise of God is universal and unlimited that he is universal it reaches every individual and not only that it's unlimited whatever problem you have goes beyond that higher problem that goes beyond that a greater mountain goes beyond that the promise of God is universal and unlimited the promise of God is timeless and time tested it's timeless and time tested whatever the time whatever the situation whatever the security whatever the insecurity whatever the perplexity and whatever the confusion the, the promise of god is timeless and time tested the promise of god is sacred and supernatural it's sacred and supernatural the devil cannot touch it it's sacred and evil powers cannot alter it it is sacred heaven protects it heaven preserves it because the promise of god is supernatural is sacred and the promise of god is sufficient and satisfactory it's sufficient for you any problem you brought tonight you are going to discover the promise of god is sufficient and satisfactory tonight he has delivered you already he sets you free already because of this promise of God. Come back, come back uh, to chapter 105, Psalm 105, verse 42. For he remembered his holy promise, and Abraham is servant. And this promise, you remember, at the time we're talking now, Abraham had gone a long time. Abraham was already in heaven. Abraham already in paradise and yet he remembered the promise you know why the promise is as enduring as the sun Abraham become and go the sun is still there Moses become and go the sun is still there the promise of God is as enduring as the sun the promise of God is as all encompassing as the air would breathe as the water would drink all encompassing that means that anywhere there is air that somebody can breathe the promise of god is there anywhere there is water in your house in your kitchen in your room in your bathroom anywhere you can find water the promise of god will flow into that place anywhere you can have air to breathe and you're breathing tonight the promise of god is as all encompassing as the air will breathe the promise of god is as stable and steadfast as the earth as the earth even heaven and earth may pass away but the promise of god will never pass away and as you are standing on the solid ground the word of god and the promise of god is as solid as the rock as solid as the rock all those mountains that have been there for years even when they have worn out the promise of God will still be yea and amen in your life anywhere you go anywhere you find yourself you might find yourself in the belly of the fish like Jonah the promise of God will reach you there you might find yourself on Mount Moriah the promise of God will reach you there the promise of God is as assuring as the voice of him who cannot lie the promise of God is as assuring as the promise of him who cannot lie. The promise of God is as fresh as the eternal God who never fails nor fails. The promise of God is as fresh as God himself. God is always fresh, never tired, never weary, never fainting, never failing, and never exhausted and the promise of God is as fresh as the Almighty God himself the promise of God is as dependable and trustworthy as Christ the faithful one the Savior the healer the Redeemer and the deliverer you cannot miss it tonight I said you cannot miss it tonight Look at that again, look at that again. Psalm 105, I'm reading from verse 42. It says, for he remembered his holy promise. When he remembered his holy promise, what did he do? Exodus chapter 12. 
Exodus chapter 12. I read from verse 12. Exodus chapter 12. Reading from verse 12. In Exodus chapter 12, verse 12, it says, For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. But man and beast against all the gods of Egypt will I execute judgment. I am the Lord. And the blood, and the blood, and the blood, and the blood, the blood of Jesus covers us. The blood of Jesus cleanses us. The blood of Jesus cures us. The blood of Jesus protects us. The blood of Jesus preserves us. Whatever it is tonight, there is power in the blood. There's authority in the blood. There is healing in the blood. There is protection in the blood. It's not how you feel. It's not how you think. It's not how you, what you know. It is the blood. And everywhere tonight, everywhere tonight, the blood of Jesus is getting over there. And the blood of Jesus is covering you tonight. And it says in verse 13, And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the houses where ye are. And when I see the blood, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you. You are saved. You are healed. You are delivered. It says, when I smite the land of Egypt. Look at verse 41 of that same chapter. Verse 41. And it came to pass at the end of the 430 years, even the self same day, it came to pass that all the host of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. Redemption has come. Deliverance has come. Because of the blood, because he remembered his promise, and then he brought them out. You are out, out of darkness, out of sickness, out of oppression, out of slavery, out of the yoke. He sets you free. Somebody there. He sets you free. Tonight it sets you free. And after that freedom, look at chapter 15, Exodus 15, Exodus 15. I'm reading here from verse 26. Exodus 15, verse 26, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, thank God you have ears to hear. And will do that which is right in his sight. Thank God you do that which is right. And give ear to his commandments to keep all his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee. It must not be upon you. Egyptian disease must not be upon you. Babylonian disease must not be upon you. Assyrian disease must not be upon you. Middle Persian disease must not be upon you. All those things they are talking about in the world, in their medical encyclopedia, will not be upon you in Jesus' name. It says, For I am the Lord that healeth thee. Not I was, not I was, I am. Today, I am. In your life, I am. In your family, I am. Whatever the challenge, I am. I am the Lord that healeth you. You are healed tonight in Jesus' name. Numbers chapter 21. Numbers chapter 21. I'm reading here from verse 7. Numbers chapter 21, verse 7. Therefore, the people came to Moses. You come to Christ tonight. And Moses never failed them. Christ, greater than Moses, will not fail you tonight. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against thee. Pray unto the Lord, 
that ye take the serpents from us. Serpents, take it away tonight. Scorpions, take it away tonight. Evil spirits, take it away tonight. And Moses prayed for the people. And the Lord said unto Moses, Make thee a fairy serpent, and set ye it upon the pole, and it shall come to pass. Somebody say, it shall come to pass. On my behalf, it shall come to pass. As I pray, it shall come to pass. As the Lord answers my prayer, it shall come to pass. Tonight for me, tonight for me, it shall come to pass that everyone, everyone, how many people here? Everyone, how many people? Everyone that is beating when he looketh upon it shall live. You have to live. You have to be healed. You have to be delivered. That swelling has to vanish out of that place. All those moving objects, they have to go. It's not a perhaps or maybe. It says everyone that is pitching, when he looketh upon it, shall live. And Moses made a serpent of brass and put it upon a pole. And it came to pass that if a serpent had pitching any man, when he beheld the serpent of brass, tell me, he lived. Somebody there is alive. Yeah. Uh, look, at, look at the fulfillment. Look at the fulfillment in John chapter 3. John chapter 3. And we're reading from verse 14. John chapter 3, verse 14. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. That whosoever, somebody shall whosoever, that's the every man of Numbers chapter 21. Now, New Testament, whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. It has happened. Psalm 103, here is your testimony. Psalm 103, here is your song. Psalm 103, here is your declaration. A true declaration. Look at Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. What has he done? Who forgives all thine iniquities. On the authority of the word of God, every iniquity in your life, he will forgive in Jesus' name. He will cleanse you. He will set you free. He will give you total transforming salvation in Jesus' name. You've got it already. Forgive us all thy iniquities. Who healeth all thy diseases. Can you heal cancer? Tuberculosis? Blindness? Hunchback? Ernia? Sequel cell, I can't hear you. Who healeth all thy diseases? Who redeemeth thy life from destruction? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies thy mouth? Somebody there. Who satisfies? Who satisfies? Tonight, you open your mouth wide and you will feel it. I said you open your mouth wide and you will feel it. Salvation, healing, deliverance, prosperity, miracle, signs and wonders, joy, happiness, breakthrough. You've got it in Jesus' name. Who satisfied thy mouth with goodness, with good things, so that 
the youth is renewed like the eagles. As your days, so will your strength be. The older you get, the younger you become. And every part of your body, internally, outwardly, every part of your body will be renewed day by day in Jesus' name. He will renew your youth. He will empower you. He will set you free. He will send this word to you tonight and deliver you completely in Jesus' name. Point number two now, the constant work of the heavenly prince. The constant work of the heavenly prince. Many people, as we're talking about Jesus, we do not understand, we do not think about the fact that he is a prince, a prince. Yes, we'll call him king, but in particular, a prince. Look at uh, Isaiah chapter 9. Isaiah chapter 9. I'm reading from verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called. And his name shall be called. And his name shall be called. Look up here. When Christ says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in unto him. When you open the door and Christ comes into you, wonders enter. Because his name shall be called Wonderful. And tonight, as well, Jesus in your heart, wonders, wonders, wonders will follow you about in Jesus' name. Counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting Father, tell me the rest. The Prince of Peace, the Prince of Peace is there with you. The constant work of the heavenly prince. We're coming to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. I read from verse 25. Daniel chapter 9. Reading from verse 25. In verse 25, know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince. Messiah, the Prince. You see, the Word of God calls him Prince. The heavenly Prince is coming from heaven. And when he speaks, that is final. And tonight, he speaks healing in your life. Miracle in your life. And once the priest, the heavenly priest, speaks to your life tonight, final, nobody can reverse it. <laughs> Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3. Reading from verse 15. Acts chapter 3, verse 15. And killed the priest of life, whom God raised from the dead, whereof we are witnesses. It's referred to here, the scribes, the prince of life. And his name, verse 16, his name through faith in his name has made this man strong. That man is gone to heaven. Now he's talking to this man in front of me. He's talking to this sister in front of me. Has made this man, this woman strong. You will feel the strength and the power of Christ tonight down in your soul, down in your spirit, every part of your brain, all those things that, are, you know, they are dying and you're sluggish and almost, uh, almost collapsing, power will come into you in Jesus' name. Because the name makes the man, the woman, the brother, 
the sister, the boy, the girl makes you strong. And his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see or will see you. And know, will know the miracle you have got. Yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness. Can you be perfectly healed? I say, can you be perfectly delivered? Totally sound? Perfect soundness? Tonight is the night. And it says, in the presence of you all. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5. The heavenly prince. Acts, chapter 5, verses 30 and 31. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew and hanged on a tree. Him has God exalted with his right hand to be, tell me, a prince and a savior. His prince, his prince, the heavenly prince, to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1. We're reading from verses 5 and 6. Revelation chapter 1, verse 5. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness and the false begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth is prince unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings and priests unto God and his father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever Amen. Amen. Jesus is prophet, priest, and king. As a prophet, his word cannot fall to the ground. It must be fulfilled. Jesus lifted up. Jesus raised up as prophet. And as prophet, his word cannot fall to the ground. For Samuel, Chapter 3, verses 19 and 20. For Samuel, chapter 3, verse 19. And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, and did let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel from Dan, even to be a shepherd, knew that Samuel was established to be a prophet of the Lord. And Jesus Christ as prophet, when he speaks the word, when he proclaims the word, when he gives the promise in your life, nothing can reverse it. That word will be fulfilled. Tonight is fulfilled in your life. In Isaiah chapter 55, Isaiah chapter 55, I read here from verse 10. Isaiah chapter 55, verse 10. For the rain cometh down, and the snow from heaven, and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth, and maketh it bring forth and put that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be. So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the scene where to I send it. Tonight 
the watch will prosper in your life. Amen. Let's hear the prophet now. Let's hear Christ, the prince. Let's hear him talk. In verse 16 of Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Matthew chapter 8. Verse 16. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils, and he cast out the spirits with what? With his word. With what? With his word. Tell me. With, with what? With his word. And healed all that were sick. His word cannot fall to the ground. And when he says, you are healed, count it down, you are healed. <laughs> Remember, Jesus Christ was prophet. He was priest. As a priest, when any plague breaks out, his intervention and his intercession must always stop the plague wherever that sickness is found, wherever that disease is found. We have studied recently Christ is our high priest. And when any plague broke out and the high priest went in there, that plague must stop. Numbers chapter 16. In Numbers chapter 16, verse 47. Numbers 16, verse 47. And Aaron took as Moses commanded and ran into the midst of the congregation. And behold, the plague was begun among the people. And he put on incense and made an atonement for the people. Look at this. And he stood between the dead and the living. And the plague was stayed. That's the high priest. He came in there. And once he came in there, the plague cannot continue. What two or three are gathered in my name there. I am in the midst of them. And as Christ is in the midst of us tonight, is the high priest of our profession. And as we look unto him, the high priest, every plague, every sickness in your life is taken away in Jesus' name. His prophet, his priest, his king, his prince. And because his king, as king, his word carries full authority and final authority. The word of a king carries full authority and final authority. Anybody in the realm, anybody in the domain, anybody in the territory, anybody in the kingdom that says anything, that does anything, when the king stands up, no matter who said what he said before, how popular was that person, how great was that person, until the king stands up to speak. And when the king stands up to speak, his word carries full authority and final authority. And whatever Satan has said, whatever evil spirit has said, whatever idol worshippers have said, whatever your dreams have said, whatever your body is telling you, whatever you carry, King Jesus rises up tonight. And he gives the final word, and he gives the full authority, and therefore, every sin has to bow. In your life, everything will bow. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8. We're reading here from verse 4. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Let him enter your heart tonight. Enter your brain tonight. Enter your thoughts tonight. He carries full authority. He carries full power. 
is prince and is king. And tonight, you are delivered in Jesus' name. What the word of a king is, there is power. And you may say unto him, What doest thou? Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4, verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased. And there was a great car. Verse 41. And they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? that even the wind and the sea obey him. Whatever storm is in your life tonight, peace be still. <laughs> Luke chapter 4, verse 36. Luke chapter 4, verse 36. And they were all amazed and spake among themselves saying what a word is this for with authority and power he commanded the unclean spirits and they come out somebody shout and they come out somebody say they have to come out somebody shout they will come out as king when he speaks, evil spirits will come out. Yeah. Sicknesses will be healed. Yeah. Storms will be calmed. Yeah. Demons will have to surrender. Yeah. Principalities and powers will live your life. Yeah. The spirit of death or suicide flee away in Jesus' name. Yeah. Point number three now. The confirmed wonders of his healing power. Wonders tonight. Where is that wonder coming? Coming upon your life. Wonders. The wonder of healing. The wonder of miracle. The wonder of supernatural signs. Wonders tonight. Somebody shout wonders tonight. In your body, wonders. In your brain, wonders. In your blood system, wonders. In your tummy, wonders. In your spirit, wonders. For every member of your family, wonders. The confirmed wonders of his healing power. The promises of God will be fulfilled tonight. The Lord never fails, and in your life, it will not fail. In your family, it will not fail. As you pray tonight, you'll see the hand of God touching and turning everything around. First Kings chapter 8. First Kings chapter 8, reading from verse 56, 5, 6. First Kings chapter 8, verse 56. Blessed be the Lord that has given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised according to all according to all that he promised there has not failed one word of all this good promise which he promised by the hand of Moses his servant no failure tonight no denial tonight Mark chapter 2 Mark Chapter 2. I'm reading from the swan. And again, he entered into Capernaum. Today, he is at Bagada. In full power, he is at Bagada. What you over there is at Bagada here. And again, he entered into Bagada. That's all the amen you have. After some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. You see the house tonight? 
and straightway, 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 many were gathered together, in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. And he preached the word unto them, and they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come near unto him for the press, for the crowd, for the multitude, they uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, I believe tonight. When Jesus saw their faith, I believe tonight. I have faith tonight. Tonight all things are possible. I said tonight all things are possible. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Verse 9, whether it, is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise, take up thy bed, and walk. But that ye may know, you will know tonight. But that ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He says to the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately, somebody shouts, immediately. And immediately he arose, and he took up his bed, and he went before them all, in so much that they were all amazed and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. You'll see something new tonight. You lie there, you'll see something new tonight. A new miracle, a new manifestation. A new kind of healing, a new transformation, a new manifestation of the power of God in your life tonight. Mark chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 1. Mark chapter 5, verse 1. And he came over unto the other side of the sea, into the country of the Gadarenes. And when he was come out of the ship, immediately there met him out of the tomb a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him no not or chase because that he had been often bound with fetters and chains and the chains had been plugged asunder by him and the fetters broke in, in pieces, neither could any man tame him. But Jesus will deal with it. Jesus will handle this one. Jesus will break the yoke. Jesus will drive out the evil spirit. And always night and day, verse 5, he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him and cried with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of the most high God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And I say, Whatever is in you that should not be in you, Come out of that man. Come out of that woman. It has to obey. And he asked, what is thy name? And he answered, saying, my name is Legion, for we are many. No matter how many they are, how many sicknesses conspire together to destroy you, they are coming out tonight. And he besought him much that you would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there near unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding, and all the devils and all the demons and all the evil spirits besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave, 
and the unclean spirits, thousands of them, went out, they're going out, and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. And they were about 2,000. That's what they wanted to do to the man. And they were choked in the sea. And they that fed the swine fled and told each in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what was 